All right. So I'm a software architect, and that means I'm not coding as much as I probably should be. Um, just find myself to be too busy. And maybe that's not such a good thing. So today I thought I'd take on the challenge of writing Conway's Game of Life. If you're not familiar with it, it's a sort of coding challenge that uh, John Conway came up with in 1970. And the idea is he gives us four rules of life, and it's up to us to implement those four rules in whatever way we see fit. And what you end up with, as you can see here, is a bit of an animation that kind of simulates or emulates this idea of, of pixels that have come to life. And over the years, people have uh, come up with different kinds of patterns that have certain kinds of behavior, and there's a lot of innovation that can happen with such a simple game. Now, like I said, I haven't been coding much lately, so um, I figured I'm going to go ahead and cut some corners. So, of course, that means I'm going to go right to ChatGPT. Version 4 just came out. It's a little better than it used to be, and I want to see what it can do for me. Now, it seems like GPT is familiar with Conway's Game of Life. That's a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask it to help me code it. So here I want to be a little lazy. I don't want a fancy interface. So I asked it if it can create a console application that uh, executes Conway's Game of Life. Now, what's really interesting here is every time you query GPT to give you code, it's as if a new developer is writing the code. So you never know what you're going to get. And of course, I'm scanning the code as it generates it. I want to make sure it's not giving me something nefarious. Now, this is fun. It looks like GPT is having network issues again. Uh, yesterday, it went down, and that should be a bit of a cautionary tale. But I'm going to go ahead and copy the code and see if I can get it to run. Now, at a glance, I don't see any red squigglies. That's a good sign. I'm going to go ahead and build it. It looks like it built. So here we go. Now, that's pretty wild. Look at those things. They came to life. Now, running this in a console app probably isn't the, the most efficient way to do it. Um, it's an infinite loop using thread sleep. Now I can go ahead and make a few changes and change the live cells to be circles and the dead cells to be periods. I'll set the refresh to a fifth of a second. That's pretty cool. You can see some patterns emerging. As opposed to the first time that I executed it, it looks like these critters are staying alive a little bit longer. If I were to keep modifying this application, I would see what I could do about having a smoother user experience. Maybe I could swap the console with a WPF. Or maybe it would be fun to see if I could code this in JavaScript and have it run in a browser. Now, that was a lot of fun, but um, this wasn't much of a different experience than if I had gone to Stack Overflow or, or search for some code online. In a way, I kind of robbed myself of the experience of trying to solve this puzzle. And we should probably talk about the fact that I just copied and pasted the code without any real kind of testing. At first glance, the animations look nice, but I'm not sure if it actually followed the rules because I didn't write any kinds of tests. So that's something to think about moving forward.